with you, lad. Leave me be, then. It ain't your turn to sleep. Well, I got something I've been needing to tell you. Go away, I says. I'm sleeping. But they be hanging me at sunrise. Yeah? So? So after they hang me, I can't exactly say what it is I have to say, and I cannot. No, I suppose you can't. Have your say then, quick now, and leave me in peace. I was dreaming, you see. Having the most wonderful dream. Till you woke me up. Don't know if I'll ever get that dream back again. I never told you my name, did I? You're Jack Slade. How'd you know that? I've seen your picture once in the Omaha Gazette. You was... Division Two Superintendent of the Overland Express. So you've heard of him then? The taskmaster of the highest order? A Valentino scoundrel? A pugilist? Mr. I already told you I know who Jack Slade is. So what is it you have to say? What I have to say is that nearly every story you've heard about me is a vile fabrication. You be pretty, Robbie. When you're back amongst the commerce and assembly of free men, I want you to tell everyone you know that you met Jack Slade on the last night of his life. That you and he talked all through the long night, and upon hearing the chronicle of his life from his own lips, his ups, his downs, his trials, his burdens, you concluded that history had treated him with long cruelty. Jack Slade. Although perfect in certain respects, was one of the most honorable men to ever walk the American West. Whoever I say this to is going to laugh right in my face. How many men have you killed, Jack Slade? Three. No, four. Besides, every one of those killings was adjudicated to be committed in self-defense or due to provocation beyond the point of reason. And what can you give me in return for telling the world this tale of yours? You drive a hard bargain, lad. A very hard bargain. In exchange, you get the sand in my pocket. In exchange, you get me not strangling the life out of you right now. I have not to lose. They're not about to hang me twice, you know? This is a deal, lad. This is it a deal? Jack Slate, your wife's here. My <laughs> wife? <laughs> Didn't know you were a family man, Mr. Slate. Were, not is. Not no more due to my habitual drunkenness. Springs has set an appeal to President Lincoln himself 
explaining my situation by Western Union Telegram. I'm waiting on his decision. You don't need to talk to him, Virginia. He's crazy. Every night he has the dreams of a lunatic. Just before you woke me up a while ago, Mr. Slade, I saw the city of San Francisco in great detail. Although I've never been west of Denver, I stopped into a little dining room run by a Chinese family where I had a dish called pork sweet and sour. Pork sweet and sour. Pork sweet and sour. Which was it, man? Sweet or sour? Make up your mind. It was both, Mr. Slade. And I've never tasted anything so delicious. And in back of the dining room was a room full of books. I've never seen so many books. One of the books was called We Were There with the Pony Express. Was that that book? I don't rightly know. I didn't have the presence of mind in my dream to open it up and read it. But I imagine you were. Everyone knows that you kept the Pony Express going over some of the roughest territory there ever was. Yeah, everyone knows it was on my watch, that little chill that went missing. That the states of the Union connected, one up to the other, till the time it took, the telegraph lines were completed. One and only, wayward mail pouch in the history of the Overland Express. If I should leave this place, if ever I should be free again, I would like more than anything to be hired on as a surveyor for the telegraph company take the measure of this land. Before I look at those telegraph wires, I believe that one day you're going to carry with them the songs of America. See what I mean, Virginia? Crazy. Oh, Jack Slade. He's a dreamer is all. Maybe one of the visionaries. You like songs, do you? Oh, yes, yes. Who doesn't like a good song? Then I'm going to sing something for you fellas. If that's all right with you, Mr. Slade. I would raise no objection to that. Here you sing once more. I'm going to sing the one about the Missouri River then. You know, it seems like a million miles from here, but it's only a few days travel by riverboat along the North Plate. The Missouri song. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you. Cottonwood Springs are right for a hanging. Oh, Jack Slade. You know I love you so much. I 
love you too. Mr. Smith, you received your answer from Hey Lincoln. What did you say? I said you received your answer. Shall I read it to you? Yes, please. My one good eye be suddenly watering, so. <coughs> 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 Washington, D.C., Western Union Telegraph Company, Thomas Eckert, General Manager and Proprietor. On the 20th day of June in this year of our Lord. Out with it, man. Out with it. In the matter of Robert A. Smith of the Nebraska the Territory. Oh, God, man. You haven't said three words since I arrived here. Now, the sudden, you're the greatest order since Cicero. What does it say, Mr. Slate? You're a free man, Robbie. Pardon. By the grace of God and President Lincoln, you've been cheered, clear of the charge of desertion. Mr. Slade, thank you. Go on now. Sheriff and I have some business matters to discuss. I noticed why you dislike me so, Mr. Slade. Yeah, why is that? Because I remind you of the person you once was, the one you're still wanting to be. I'll tell him. I will. What you told me, you gotta pray for your soul as well. Go on, get back to that lunatic asylum you escaped from. Sheriff, take me now. I have no use to see another sunrise or any of your formalities. Take me now, and you have any kindness in your heart. You allow me a dram or two of whiskey. Now, I readily admit it. My doctor, he's advised temperance, and I surely intend to follow his counsel in the future. But today, <laughs> well, surely this day qualifies as an exceptional one. Damn you, Jack Slade. Your end is near, isn't it? Take me before daylight, Sheriff. Before the rugged silhouette of the bluffs and badlands becomes visible in the light. Where the beauty of this land would be the most unwelcome sight. Take me before the set of my wife's perfume fades from my cheek. <laughs> She's a symbolizing influence on me, as you can see. And to see her again, this has made my heart ache beyond imagine. I miss her so. I wish she never appeared. Take me now, sir, please. Take me now. That a drink or two whiskey. These are the final requests of a man named John Alfred Jack Slade. Frank, you know I'll call me terms with Mr. Slade. <laughs> <laughs> well then, my situation is more dire than I had imagined. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story, Jack Slade. I trust it's a short one there, Sheriff. Back in the winter of 1861, a young girl from around here became deathly ill with diphtheria. The doctor said her only hope was a homeopathic tonic made of belladonna and willow bark that could only be found in St. Joseph, Missouri. Well, the St. Joseph station, they didn't have a rider scheduled to go out for another 10 to 12 hours. But the Overland Express District Superintendent, or the station boss there, the sent out a rider the very minute that that tonic could be secured and relayed to Cottonwood Springs. It caused a major disruption of the entire line. Extra riders, extra horses. I nearly killed the sheriff, set in motion and thing like that. In the midst of it all, that one children went missing. It was an unforgivable lapse when you pride yourself on running the most intricate messenger relay in the history of America. Now you and I both know what that missing mochila would have had inside of it. Bills laden, titles, deeds, 
stock certificates, bridge hole business mostly. You think anyone's going to care about any of that a hundred years from now when they write the story of the Pony Express? I don't know, Sheriff. I just don't know. I'll remember it. Now look here, Sheriff. You're done with your story telling. I can already see the sun's about to rise over the Badlands, and I don't want to see another dawn. Her name is Lily. Who? Our child. My beloved daughter. You about to stop the world for her that day. Just common decency is all. No. No! Don't you see? We've all got angels in us, Mr. Slate. Showing up uninvited and unannounced and fighting with our demons and our lesser commoners. Horse trade, doing commerce with them. And on that day, the angels prevailed. And that touched our lives. So she lived after all. She died despite the best modern medicine, modern medicine could make. It grieves me to hear your loss, Sheriff. I too know the pain of losing a child. You just don't know how you're going to go on. But you do make it. But you live with it for the rest of your life. Walk out that door, Jack Slade. Do it before I change my mind. Get as far away from this county as you can. I won't be hanging you today. Not for pistol whipping, no attorney. <laughs> suited you. You'll have me back. I propose we abandon these western states and territories to the next generation of rogues and bullies and dreamers while you and I head east together across that river of yours. That's the little <laughs> Damn ye, Jack Slick.